Hey guys, it's Paul. I recently had an opportunity to sit down with Jared Johnson from the Healthcare Now Radio podcast. Jared and I share an interest in fa and fascination in this acceleration of healthcare consumerism. In particular, over the last couple of years, what's been fueling the changes in consumer empowerment, um, and how can we as marketers understand and meet their needs um, as we represent hospitals, health systems, and everything else. So I've got a few years on Jared, and remember back in 1998, when there was that first seismic shift um, to help inform and educate and empower consumers in a way that they've never had before. 16 million people will come to WebMD this month. Some will learn about a condition or a diagnosis. Others will chat with experts. Many will simply decide when to visit a doctor. We'll help them all to navigate WebMD's wealth of medically reviewed information to find exactly what they need. Americans may have thousands of different questions about their health, but now they have a single place to find the answers. So 1998, the birth of WebMD. And according to that commercial, 16 million viewers or unique visitors to their website per month. So let's fast forward 25 years. March of 2020, the WebMD website saw 127 million unique visitors to their website uh, during that first quarter, most of which during the month of March, those earliest days of the COVID pandemic. Those statistics far and away outranked any other government, healthcare entity online or any other possible resource. And so the lessons learned, I believe, um, from 1998, when we first started accepting the fact that uh, the patients were no longer simply patients, but they were informed and educated and empowered consumers, I think those lessons that we learned 25 years ago still apply uh, today. Today, that healthcare consumerism is certainly fueled by information. 75 plus percent people surveyed in any survey you could possibly see. Um, talk about how they are looking at online reviews, they're looking at online information, um, and that has a lot of influence beyond just uh, word of mouth and, and, and informal and casual referrals. For younger audiences, a lot of their decisions are based by, on, on cost. They're very cost conscious. I think a lot of this is fueled by high deductible health insurance plans. Um, but we also see the retail giants stepping into this space. You've heard us talk before about the role that Amazon Health is having in Walmart's um, healthcare divisions, plus Rite Aid, CVS, Dollar General, all sort of jumping into this uh, a lot more. Again, over the last three years, we've seen uh, huge leaps forward in uh, telemedicine and healthcare technology and much more prolific online reviews. And so all of this is, is powering consumers beyond just information and, and influence, again, the, the title of our book, and it poses some of the same challenges for physicians and hospitals that they had to deal with back in 1998. So a few of the lessons we learned um, in the earliest days of WebMD, again, I still think apply today um, to today's healthcare consumer. First, don't be defensive. Your authority is not being challenged in any possible way, especially this. I have an MD from Harvard. I am board certified in cardiothoracic medicine and trauma surgery. I have been awarded citations from seven different medical boards in New England and I am never, ever sick at sea. So I ask you, when someone goes into that chapel and they fall on their knees and they pray to God that their wife doesn't miscarry or that their daughter doesn't bleed to death or that their mother doesn't suffer acute neural trauma from post-operative shock, who do you think they're praying to? You ask me if I have a God complex? Let me tell you something. I am God. So certainly your authority isn't being questioned like that movie clip from Malice. Um, your expertise isn't being challenged. And I think the one thing we learned in 98 with WebMD still holds true today. Accept that this is where the consumer is coming from, embrace it, and work together with them on the information that they've gathered. You know, use that self-diagnosis, the symptoms that they've typed in to help you know, accelerate your conversation with them. But I think that's the key piece of this is having that conversation. I think speaking to price transparency is essential. That may be on your control as a physician or, you know, intake folks in, in a, a more acute setting. 
But make no mistake, today's consumer, fueled by high deductible plans, uh, especially the younger consumers, are more cost, cost conscious than they ever have been before. And that's part of the reason that Walmart, known for their always low prices, you know, feels that they have a better than average shot at growing into that space. So adapting your service offerings, your operations, and your training to understand um, this new consumer and focus, frankly, on the things that you do best. Recognize that especially those retail giants are going to be stepping in, you know, with perhaps a more basic and introductory role, um, less acute, um, simpler diagnosis, simpler uh, conditions than you might treat at your hospital or health system. But I think it's essential to understand that they're here. You know, they're going to be financially outgunning us, their technology, their ability to speak to and reach consumers with, um, you know, marketing messages, all is going to be far more powerful than most hospitals and health systems can bear. So I think it's important to keep that in mind and embrace that the same way we did with WebMD in 98. So the lessons we've learned in 98, I think still hold true today. Meeting consumers where they're at, understanding what's empowering them, understanding what's important to them, and using all of this as an opportunity to have a dialogue. I think it'll be impossible for most hospitals and health systems to resist the movements of the retail giants and the cost implications. So building in that sense of partnership, accepting that a patient might have been diagnosed at Walmart but coming to you for more an advanced level of care, um, building in price transparency, I think all of this is going to be critical, but my overall sentiment is um, thinking more of your patients as empowered consumers. So I'd love to know what you think. Um, please drop some comments in the chat below here on social media. Have these retail giants arrived in your community yet? Um, have you adapted your frontline training to think of patients as empowered consumers? What are you seeing? We'd love to know. We'll continue chatting about this throughout the course of the year, both on our channels, on um, Healthcare Now Radio and other platforms. In the meantime, be well.